Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever asked yourself, how hard should I work out and for how long so I don't hurt myself so I can use the exercise to live as long as possible? Have you ever asked yourself this? Well, this is what this video is about. I'm not showing you exercises, I'm talking about exercise. We all know exercise is extremely important, but what if I told you that the right amount and intensity of exercise could be your ultimate weapon against aging and chronic diseases. Today, we're diving into some eye-opening research that could completely change the way you approach your workouts. Imagine reducing your risk of dying by up to 42% just by tweaking your weekly exercise routine. Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. So whether you're a fitness, health, or longevity enthusiast, or just starting your journey, this video will reveal exactly how much and how hard you need to work out to maximize your health and longevity. So stick around because what you're about to learn could add years, and I mean quality years, to your life. Let's get started. Many of you have probably heard that everyone should get at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity a week, or an equivalent combination of both. But the question is, is this enough to help you live as long and as healthy as possible? The following 2022 study published in the American Heart Association says you need to work out much longer to reap exercises full benefits against all-cause mortality. I'm sure some of you have heard of this study, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little further. The study followed over 116,000 adults for 30 years, 30 years, three decades, and investigated the relationship between exercise levels and mortality risk. It concluded that to achieve the best health benefits and reduce the risk of dying, you should engage in the following levels of physical activity. Vigorous physical activity, VPA for short, aim for 75 to 300 minutes per week. Moderate physical activity, MPA, aim for 150 to 600 minutes per week. The study also found that beyond 600 minutes per week, in the additional benefits reducing all cause mortality seem to plateau. So there's no need to go over 600 minutes. That's what the study is saying. And it also found that by combining these levels of vigorous physical activity and moderate physical activity, you can achieve even more of significant reduction in mortality risk, approximately 35% to 42%. That's a pretty big number. This means that people who engage in these recommended levels of physical activity have a substantially lower risk of dying compared to those who do not meet these activity levels. Since combining both is best for longevity, I will provide you with weekly workout schedules that fall within the range of 300 to 600 minutes. But before I do so, there is some serious clarification needed as to what exactly does moderate and vigorous activity really mean on an individual level? Let's start with moderate exercise. Activities like brisk walking, dancing, and gardening. These activities get you moving faster and make you breathe just a little bit harder. Now the vigorous exercise activities are like jogging, running, fast cycling, and fast swimming. These make you breathe much harder and increase your heart rate. So how do we know which exercises or activities fall under moderate or vigorous? We have to figure this out. Let's start with METS, M-E-T-S. Exercise intensity is often measured in METS, metabolic equivalents. This can vary widely from less than five METS to over 20 METS, depending on factors like your age, sex, and fitness level. A MET, or metabolic equivalent of task, is a unit that measures the energy cost of physical activities and represents the ratio of your working metabolic rate relative to your resting metabolic rate. One MET equals the amount of energy expended while you're sitting quietly. That's one MET. More on METs later. Just remember this. Remember this METs is very important. The next is the heart rate. Another way to measure exercise intensity is by using your heart rate. Moderate exercise falls on the 40 to 59% of your maximum heart rate. Vigorous exercise falls within 60 to 84% of your maximum heart rate. That's another way of measuring it. A simpler, even simpler way to measure how hard you are exercising is the talk test. This method helps you understand your exercise intensity based on easiness to talk. If you can talk comfortably, 
the exercise is moderate. If talking is hard, but still possible, the exercise is vigorous. If you can't talk at all, the exercise intensity is more than vigorous. So you can use this. Now let's talk about the weekly workout schedules that will help you meet the guidelines from, for 300 and 600 minutes per week of combined VPA and MPA to combine both moderate physical activity and vigorous physical activity into weekly workout regimen that totals between 300 and 600 minutes. The best approach is to use the following ratio guidelines. These are according to the study. The optimal combination should ensure a balanced mix of both VPA and MPA within a total range of 300 to 600 minutes. I have created three workout regimens that will fit your lifestyle and time schedules. Here are some example combinations. We'll start with a 300 minute total per week. 100 minutes of vigorous physical activity and 200 minutes of modern physical activity. Now let's jump to doing 450 minutes per week. 150 minutes of VPA and 300 minutes of MPA. Now last but not least, the one I use is 600 minutes total per week. 200 minutes of vigorous physical activity and 400 minutes of moderate physical activity. Now let me break down the weekly schedule into daily, five days a week. We'll start with the 300 minutes per week. We'll break it down into five days per week. You will do 20 minutes per day of vigorous physical activity and 40 minutes per day of modern physical activity for five days of the week. For those that wish to use the 450 minutes regimen per week, we'll break this down into five days per week. You should do 30 minutes per day of vigorous physical activity for five days and 60 minutes per day for five days of modern physical activity. That's an equivalent of an hour and a half of exercise if you decide to do the 450 minutes per week. Now, if you decide to do the 600 minutes per week, that's what I do. That's, that's the one I use, the 600 minutes per week. You need to do 40 minutes per day of vigorous physical activity for five days of the week. And moderate physical activity, you need to do 80 minutes per day for five days. That comes out to two hours per day. And that's my regimen. That's what I do. This balance approach ensures you stay within the recommended ranges and achieve the maximum health benefits, reducing mortality risk by 35 to 42%. In other words, the 300 minutes per week may result in a 35% reduction in mortality and the 600 minutes will result in a 42% reduction in mortality. The more minutes you work, the better it is. At the end of the video, I will provide you with a sample exercise that will fit into either the moderate or rigorous intensity part of the exercise regimen that you can use to create your own personal workout routines. The big question is this though, how intense should our workouts be to stave off all-cause mortality? Now, this is where it gets really interesting. You notice that each design workout above includes vigorous physical activity. So what does the research say about how hard or how many METs, as I mentioned earlier, of exercise we need for the best reduction of all cause mortality. Let's briefly discuss this study. Lack of exercise is a major cause of chronic diseases. This is an incredible study. For starters, it shows that a lack of exercise is a primary cause of most chronic diseases. Second, the study goes on to prove that exercise can prevent all the major diseases and much more, such as accelerated biological aging, sarcopenia, metabolic syndrome, obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, numerous cancers, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, heart failure, cognitive dysfunction, and much more as you can see on the screen. Exercise really is the poly pill. Incredible what exercise can do. The study then concluded that there is a definitive evidence that exercise can prevent or delay these diseases, meaning that you can avoid chronic diseases with exercise as you age. It's very possible that you won't get sick. But now here is where it gets truly fascinating as many people aren't aware of the following. Take a look at this graph on the screen found in the same study. Let me simplify and explain what this graph says so you're not confused. The graph shows 
the relationship between exercise intensity, which is measured in METS, and you can see the horizontal line, and the risk of dying, which is the vertical line. Here's what it means. I'm going to read it for you. Low exercise intensity under two METS is a very high risk of dying. Moderate exercise intensity, 2.1 to 4 METS, the risk of dying remains constant and even increases a tiny bit. Higher exercise intensity, which is between 4.1 and 6.0 METS, the risk of dying continues to decrease but less sharply. Very high exercise intensity, 6.1 to 10 METS, the risk of dying continues to decrease. Now, highest exercise intensity, 10.1 to 14 METS or above, the risk of dying does not decrease much further. Now, there's also a plateau effect. Around 9 to 10 METS increase in exercise does not significantly decrease the risk of dying further. So there's no need to go higher than that. The bottom line is that the risk of dying stops decreasing once a person reaches a certain level of exercise intensity measured in METS. Specifically, for women, this level is around 9 METS, and for men, it's around 10 METS. If the exercise intensity is below these levels, the risk of dying increases. I repeat, under 9 for women, under 10 for men, the risk of dying increases. To maintain these benefits, it's important to stay active and try to keep your exercise level for the rest of your life at the above 9 or over METS if you are a woman and above 10 METS if you are a man. This will not be easy unless you train for this and stay disciplined. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this study on the screen from 2014. It shows that the average MET values decline with age. For example, Individuals 50 years or less use 8 9 METs. Individuals 50 to 59 use 7 to 8 METs. And individuals age 60 to 69 drop to 6 to 7 METs. You see how it drops by decade? What this study shows is that many men, even younger than 50, do not meet the exercise capacity to stave off or cause mortality. And it gets worse beyond the age of 50. As shown earlier, for women, exercise capacity should be 9 METs or higher, and for men, 10 METs or higher. If the intensity is below these levels, the risk of dying increases. It is imperative that when doing the vigorous part of your workout routine, include exercise that meet or surpass the exercise capacity MET value of 9 for women and 10 for men. It is the best way to decrease the risk of dying. And this exercise capacity must be maintained for as many years as possible. It will definitely get more difficult as the years and decades go by. But with determination and discipline, it can be done. I'm doing it. Up to a point, of course. I mean, I'm sure there's an eventual age plateau that will stop all of us from doing intensive exercises. We are all human. Basically, this is the premise of my channel, to live a very healthy lifestyle, but the emphasis is to maintain a high exercise capacity for as long as possible. If you can avoid chronic diseases, you can easily live to 100 plus. That's my plan. Now, I will help you with something. I will provide you with some exercises that meet or surpass the required MET value of 9 or higher, so you can potentially use them in your exercise regimen. I provided you with links in the description. So you can check out all the exercises on the list, which they are registered, and the MET value. Let's start with the first one, which comes out to 14 METs. Bicycling up a mountain, uphill, vigorous though, it's fast. The next one is, is 10 METs. Bicycling 14 to 15.9 miles per hour, racing or leisure, a fast, vigorous effort. The next one is 10.3 METs. Bicycling stationary, 151 to 199 watts. The next one is, a lot of people do this, which comes out to 11 METs, high intensity interval exercise, hit, burpees, mountain climbing, squats, Tabata. But you have to do this vigorously. And the next one on the list is 10.5 METs, which is running 6.7 miles per hour, which comes up to a 9 minute mile. The next one is 15 METs, that's a lot of METs, running up the stairs. I love that one. The next one is 10.3 METs, which is running uphill 0.8 to 0.99 miles per hour at a 30% 30 incline. The next one is boxing, if you're into boxing, in the ring, general boxing, which comes up to 12.3 METs, that's pretty good. 
The next one that some people play is handball, which is 12 mats. Here's another one that some people are into, Taekwondo, which is 14.3 mats. Another one people are into is jump roping, which comes out to 11.8 mats, but at a moderate pace, 100 to 120 skips. The next one is climbing hills, no low, just very steep, 30 to 40 percent angle, which is 15.5 mats. That's pretty good. This is just a small list. There are others. Just take a look at this website to find all the sports and activities on the registered list. This list is registered and is used by teachers, medical professionals. I put the link in the description so you can look at it. Now let me go into some exercises for moderate intensity training that you can use. These are also found in the same links. There are more, I'm just gonna give you some samples. There are five METs or lower. Number one, which is gonna surprise you, calisthenics, moderately, 3.5 METs. Next one surprised you even more. Resistance weight training, which is five METs. That means squats, deadlifts, slow or explosive effort. It's only five METs. The next one is three METs. Body weight resistance exercises like squats, lunges, push-ups, crunches, even pull-ups fall under this. The next one I do a lot at night is stretching, 2.3 METs. Some people like going fishing. It's 3.5 METs. It's a nice, moderate exercise. Here's another one, 3.3 mats for cleaning, sweeping your house. Or same thing, 3.3 mats for kitchen activity like cooking and washing dishes and cleaning up. A lot of people do gardening, the older people, 3.8 mats. Here's another one, 4.8 mats, jogging in place in your house, just jogging in place. The other one is walking your dog, which comes up to 3 mats. The next one people do a lot is walking. But you are walking for exercise at 3.5 to 3.9 miles per hour, which comes up to 4.8 mets. This is not an all-inclusive list. These are just some. You are free to look at the links. Maybe you find something else that you like doing there. The links are in the description. In closing, achieving optimal health and longevity involves more than just the recommended 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise per week, as I have shown. As we've discussed, engaging in 300 to 600 minutes of combined moderate and vigorous physical activity can significantly reduce your risk of mortality by 35 to 42 percent. These are very good numbers. Just remember, moderate activities include brisk walking and gardening, while vigorous activities encompass running and fast cycling and the other exercises I show. Strive to incorporate exercises that challenge you. Aim for met values of 9 or higher for women and 10 or higher for men to maintain your exercise capacity as you age. This commitment can help stave off many chronic diseases and promote a long, healthy life. So I encourage all of you to take the time to create a balanced workout schedule that fits within these guidelines. It might be challenging, but the benefits are well worth the effort. I want to live longer and healthier. Do you? Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. Maybe you can use it. I wish you all the best. Stay dedicated, stay healthy, and I will see you soon in my next video. Have a great day. See you again.